Hello there. Dual Links has been out quite a while now, and since its release there has been a total of 19 structured decks released. Now, as a new or returning player, or even someone who might have started about a year ago, that's a lot of content to go through, and can be pretty confusing as to which decks are actually worth purchasing. So I decided to make this video, to make that whole process a whole lot easier. So this video is going to be structured pretty simply. I'll go through each deck one at a time, giving you a rating of the deck in the form of tiers from F tier down to S tier, and I'll give you my reasoning for its tier, and I'll point out which cards in the box are useful, whether that be for competitive reasons or for fun, or simply because you need the cards to run a particular archetype. Starting off we have Dragonic Force. This one is definitely D tier. It has two redeeming factors that keep it from being the lowest tier. First of all, if you like Legendary Dragons, this structure deck does offer Tyrant Wing, which is a card used in combination with the Fang of Critias to summon Tyrant Burst Dragon. But this is pretty negligible, because Tyrant Wing is actually a reprint in the same box you obtain Tyrant Burst, so you don't need this structure deck at all. And the other redeeming factor is Exploiter Dragon, which is not a terrible card and has seen some play in the past. Unfortunately, its effect can be replicated by a ridiculous amount of cards, and has been power crept by cards like Deity Assailant. So I would stay away from this structure deck. Next up is Sorcerer's Alliance. This structure deck is probably the worst one in the game. This is a hard F tier. In fact, let's give it an F minus tier. The deck itself contains, in my opinion, zero competitive or for fun cards. I can't see a single card in this deck that has ever seen competitive play at all. Seriously. There were cards in here that I had to read as I've never seen them played anywhere and had no idea what they did. Stay the hell away from this deck. It's just essentially evaporating your gems. Hero Rising is the first of many hero structure decks, and for its age, it's actually pretty decent. I would give it a C tier level. It contains a pretty good polymerization searcher for heroes in the form of Blazeman, who also happens to be able to send specific hero monsters to the grave to change its attribute, attack, and defense to that monsters, which is a pretty nutty effect, as it can not only boost his attack, but also allow him to change his attribute for required special summons, such as cards like Shining. Which makes this a staple in most hero decks if you're just starting out to the game and don't have many cards. This card has also seen some competitive level play, but not that much recently. But outside of Blazeman, this deck doesn't really offer you a whole lot. It does give you a fusion recovery which is pretty decent, and it also gives you an alternative art polymerization which is a plus, but other than that, the rest of the cards are just really gimmicky hero cards and never see play. So unless you have an absolute abundance of gems, or don't mind spending a little bit of money, I wouldn't really worry with this structure deck too much. Legendary Warriors is our first structure deck that actually contains a limited card. But honestly, it's not exactly very relevant anymore, and the deck overall I would give a C-. The limited card is Assault Armor, which was a card that would enable some pretty nasty one turn kills, but since its limit, it has seen basically zero play. It can be used in some fun decks here and there, but it's probably not worth the purchase. On top of that, there are maybe two other cards that are relevant, one being DD Warrior, who is actually one of the cards that power crept Exploder Dragon with an effect that is almost identical to DD Assailant, which is pretty cool considering that card does see some play here and there. But other than that, maybe Jar of Avarice, but even then that's kind of a stretch, and is extremely niche. Destiny Rulers is our second hero structure deck, and just like the first, this one actually has some value. So much value in fact, that it contains cards that are currently relevant in the meta. This deck is easily an A tier. If you take a look at the current meta of the game, you'll see that heroes are in fact tier 2, and upon closer inspection, you'll find that that deck runs 3 cards that are used in this structure deck. Vion, Celestial, and Trinity, all of which are amazing cards, with Vion even getting himself a limitation twice now. On top of that, the deck has the alternative art Polymerization, Dangerous, and Drill Dark, which are a couple of cards which do see some competitive play, especially in the past. And after that banger of a structure deck, we return to the average structure decks, with Draconic Knights. To be fair, this one does contain some cards that are at least playable, but nothing to put past a C tier. 
Archbrave Dragon is probably the deck's most redeeming card, being something that people seem to try to whip out every time a new dragon deck is released, only to be sorely disappointed and shelf again. And although people do keep trying to make it work, it's never made itself known competitively. Release Restraint Wave is actually a card I have used myself in some videos, as it can be a pretty good macro clear in equip decks, especially if you want the equip spell to be destroyed. But again, it's never made itself known competitively. The Structure deck also has a couple of honourable mentions in Knight of Creation and Felgrand, as they are both pretty fun cards to play, but they're nothing to get too excited about. Now for our first EX Structure deck, and also our first S tier deck, Spellbound Silence. This structure deck is extremely good. It offers you three cards that are amazing and are used competitively, as well as a plethora of extra playable cards. This deck contains the Silent Magician archetype, which contains both Silent Magician and Silent Magician level 8, which are both cards that have been teched into spellcaster decks competitively since its release into the game. This deck also contains Gold Sarcophagus, which is a card that recently got placed onto the limited list due to how powerful and versatile it is in any deck that utilises banishing monsters, such as Thunder Dragon or Shiranui. It also contains Magical Citadel of Endymion, which it's only a matter of time before this actually becomes a useful card, when Konami finally released some spell counter decks. It also contains Silent Burning, Silent Magician Level 4, Blast Magician, Level Up, and Good Goblin Housekeeping, which are all very useful cards even if they are not currently meta relevant. Synchro Connection is a pretty popular anime favourite, due to containing one of Yusei's signature monsters. But as it stands, I would only rate it about a C level. Competitively, I only see two cards in the deck that I've seen in tournaments, that being Junk Forward, and I think Shapeshifter was used. But even if they weren't used in tournaments, these cards are both really good, and if you're looking to make a Junk deck, this is the place to start, with cards like Anchor and Servant, as well as of course their signature monster, Junk Warrior. I thought I'd also mention Tune Warrior, as I've personally used this guy a whole bunch in combination with Unexpected Die for some normal monster synchro shenanigans. Overall though, I'd say this is one of the most fun structure decks, but definitely not a competitive one. The White Dragon of Legend is our second EX structure deck, and much like the first, this one is a banger. A tier. If you're looking to make a Blue Eyes deck, you need one copy of this deck. And it's a great place to start, with Dragon Spirit of White being one of the archetype's best cards. I don't think there will ever be a Blue Eyes list that doesn't run in. It also contains Bingo Machine and Solid Dragon, which are fantastic for Blue Eyes, as well as Cosmo Brain and Birthright, which are good for Blue Eyes, as well as any other normal monster deck. And to top it all off, the structure deck contains the core cards for Heratics, which I have used multiple times in videos and can be used for some pretty insane decks, such as Phantasmal Lord. Probably the only thing keeping this thing out of S tier is the fact that most Blue Eyes decks will take a lot of investing to eventually reach a competitive level, and although this is a good place to start, it doesn't cover a lot of the missing pieces such as Stone, and therefore doesn't really stand well on its own. Swordbound Silence is one of the most interesting decks to review, as to me it's always been so close to being great, but never quite reaching the top so therefore I'll give it an A-. The deck itself contains the Silent Swordsman archetype, which are super similar to the Silent Magicians, but sadly haven't been able to impact the meta nearly as much, at least not at the tournament level. Silent Swordsman and his level 7 counterpart are both really powerful versatile cards, basically being able to be teched into any warrior deck you please, as such whenever you see a warrior archetype released into Duel Links, you know someone will be trying this out meaning you do get a lot of value out of this structure. But like I said, it has an impact on the meta nearly as much as its Magician counterpart, and I don't believe it really has ever been considered top tier, even on its release. But the Silent Swordsman art type isn't the only competitive art type within this structure. It does also contain some Noble Knight equipped spells that are basically needed to play Noble Knights, and those decks have had some tournament success in the past. Now for what I believe is the best structure deck in terms of its value on the list. Ancient Gear Awakening. This is my highest rated structure deck, being an S+, purely because if you purchase 3 copies of this structure deck, it will give you enough cards for a fully functioning competitive deck list, which is unique to only this structure deck. If you are a new player and are willing to spend a tiny bit on this game, 
This will give you a full deck. On screen now is an example of a fully functioning Ancient Gear deck that only uses cards from the Structure deck. Obviously, this is not an optimal list and there are plenty of improvements that can be made if you own more cards, but there is no other structure deck that can build a fully functioning deck list out of itself. Reactor Dragon, Gear Town, Wyvern and Fortress are all staples in Ancient Gear, and Double Cyclone and Wild Tornado are both great removal cards. Planet Pathfinder is also a pretty notable card in here as we don't have terraforming yet, so if you need a way to search for a field spell, this is it. Ancient Gear Frame is also worth mentioning as it's absolutely integral if you are trying to create an ultimate Ancient Gear column. Now for the most well known EX structure deck on the list. Neos Fusion. S minus. Even if Neos Fusion and Brave Neos were the only two cards you got out of buying this, I would still give it an S minus for its value. Neos Fusion is a card that will always see play. If you get the structure deck, you'll be purchasing a card that will always be relevant in one way or another, and not just in hero decks. Just because this card can send stuff from the deck to the grave, it will always be relevant outside of its own art type. Just look at Lunar Light for an example. Now the reason I gave this an S- and not an S is because outside of Neos Fusion, the deck isn't that great, or at least not an S level. It has a few cards like Aqua, Connector, Glow Moss, Panther, Next, and a whole bunch of other Neospatian cards which are all pretty useful inside their own art type, but they are not really that competitive anymore, even if they have seen some tournament play in the past, and on top of that, they are only useful within their own art type, so you're basically only buying this structure deck for Neos Fusion if you don't plan to play Neospatian. Return of the Red Eyes is a structure deck many were wondering why it wasn't released as an EX structure, as to be honest, its power level is pretty crazy. Easily S tier. The absolute best thing about this list is that even if you are a free to play player, purchasing it as a one off is still pretty good, as Red Ice Fusion is easily searchable with Insight, meaning you can still play this structure deck pretty easily whilst only owning one copy. This deck will give you Red Ice Fusion, it will give you Slash Dragon, Archfiend, Return, Retro, Wyvern, and Cards of the Red Stone, which are all pretty good cards in the Red Eyes art type. And as an added bonus, it will give you Birthright, Spike Shield, and the Dark Steel Fusion, which are all cards that have been used competitively. And on top of all that, it will even give you Toon Red Eyes for your Toon decks. Full Metal Desperado is another EX structure deck, which offers you one of the most versatile machine type monsters in the game. But just like Neo's Fusion, that's all you're paying for with this deck. It's an A minus. You have all heard of him before Desperado Barrel Dragon. This guy is an insane monster that is used in any deck that can run a Dark Machine type monster, and has been played competitively since his release. He may have fallen out of the top tiers right now and is considered more of a rogue card, but it's very likely he'll make a return, and for that reason I cannot rate this structure deck any lower than an A-, as you'll always be paying for a card that is usable and won't expire. But if Desperado wasn't in this box, I would probably give it like a C or D tier, as the rest of the cards are honestly pretty bad. BM4 Blast Spider, Gen X Ally Crusher, Regretful Rebirth, and Dekochi do offer some light to the deck, especially considering most do combo with Desperado. But if you are purchasing this deck, do keep in mind you are basically only getting one card. Now returning to our S rated EX decks, we have Master of Chaos. Honestly, this deck is a must purchase, and not even for its signature monster that comes with it. This deck contains two extremely versatile cards that you can see everywhere, the first being Keeper of Dragon Magic. This card is great, as it can search for not only Polymerization, but any Fusion normal spell card. Cards like Neos Fusion and Red Eyes Fusion, which is great, as it can make purchasing other copies of other structure decks more viable. The other card is Advanced Ritual Art, which lets you ritual summon any ritual monster using normal monsters from your deck. So this card can literally be used in any ritual deck, with the added bonus of being able to send specific cards from deck to grave, such as Blue Eyes. On top of that, this deck contains a whole bunch of other well-known cards, such as Dark Cavalry, which is one of the best fusion monsters in the game, Power of the Guardians, Spellbook of Organization, Spellbook of Power, Chaos Form, Magician of Chaos, 
It even contains a couple of Gaia slash Blackluster soldier support in the form of a Risen Gaia and Gateway to Chaos. Even the weaker fodder cards in this list, like Crystal Sea and Fusion Recovery, are still pretty decent. King's Resonance is yet again another EX structure deck, but much like the previous, you don't buy it for its ace monster. And sadly, this one is a lot worse. B tier. So this deck has two factors that are considered when deciding on whether or not you want to purchase. First of all, it contains Assault Mode, which is a card required to play any of the Assault Mode monsters, which includes the monsters that are not included in this structure deck. So simply if you want to be able to play those Assault Mode monsters, you will need to buy this deck. Secondly, it contains Psy Reflector, which is a card used in combination with Assault Mode and Assault Beast to create any generic level synchro monster between level 5 and level 9, which makes this a pretty decent purchase on its own, as this combo is considered a one card synchro summon, since it only takes you opening Psy Reflector to pull off the combo. This deck does also include Fire Formation Yoko, King Synchro, Good Goblin Housekeeping, Powerful Rebirth, Red Dragon Archfiend, and Warrior Lady of Wasteland, which are all pretty decent cards. Sadly though, this deck isn't quite considered A tier, as you don't really get a decent Assault Mode monster to play with it, nor is there really one in the game yet, so the whole Assault Mode thing is more just like you would play for fun than an actual competitive deck. And since Psy Reflector doesn't actually see any competitive play either, this deck is pretty hard to rate any higher than a B tier, especially considering it's priced as an EX deck. Dragunity Override is another EX structure deck. It's a deck that gave a much needed buff to an old art type that allowed them to be played at a competitive level. A tier. Dragunity is a deck that is definitely considered competitive. It's not quite tiered at the moment, and it's more of a cheesy OTK rogue deck, but you will see this deck occasionally have high placings at the tournament level, and if you ever want to play that deck, you will need to purchase this structure deck. It contains their main boss monster in the form of Dragunity Knight Ascalon, as well as some of their main core cards in Phalanax, Zenatus, Arama, and Lance, as well as some of their many synchro monsters. It also contains a lot of decent Dragunity cards such as Atlas, which may not see competitive play, but are definitely not bad. Other than the Dragonity stuff itself, the deck does contain Parallel Twister, Bad Aim, and Ultimate Providence, which are all well-used cards. Probably the only thing keeping this deck out of being an S-tier deck is the fact that a lot of the cards in the box are reprints, so if you've already invested into the previous Dragonity support, you won't get as much value out of purchasing this. And on top of that, the structure deck isn't versatile at all, with most of the cards obviously being focused on Dragonity, so if you don't want to play Drag Unity, there'll be zero point in buying this. Next up, we have a deck that probably shouldn't be considered an EX structure deck. Gladiator's Storm. This one is B tier. If this deck wasn't priced as an EX structure deck, I might have placed it higher, but for what an EX deck is meant to give you, this certainly missed the mark. This deck tried to take an old art type and make them competitive, but it fell a little short, at least in my opinion. Gladiator Beast is certainly considered a King of Games worthy deck, but I don't even know if I consider this a rogue deck as it's certainly on the lower end of the spectrum. This deck gave you most of the core cards for the art type, like Geyserus, Test Tiger, Nerakias, Bestari, and Miramilo, as well as some of the pretty useful Gladiator Beast supporting cards like Chariot. Thankfully after this deck was released, Vespius and Charge were both released as both an Ultra and an SR in a box, which certainly helped the art type but in my opinion, those cards are what you wanted to see in the structure deck, as without them, the deck is pretty rubbish. So unlike most structure decks where you can buy three of the structure deck to get the best cards for the art type, without having to dig into a box, this one you can't. And since the only reason you would ever buy this deck is for Gladiator Beast, it's definitely not worth it, especially considering there are no other useful cards in this box except Unexpected Die. And finally, we have yet another hero structure deck, Hero Generation. I'd give this one a B. This structure deck was pretty awesome for anyone that missed out on Mass Change, as it gave everyone an easy way to get a hold of the card, which is a very competitive hero card and is currently used in the highest tier hero decks in the meta. It also gave us access to Favorite Hero, which is an amazing equip spell that I featured on my channel recently, as well as the brand new Mass Change target, Koga, 
which has brought Neo's Fusion decks to life. Now there is one pretty big issue with this structure deck, and that on its own, it's kind of missing everything. This is what I would call an expansion pack for heroes, as it doesn't really have any useful hero cards outside of the cards mentioned, so the deck on its own won't go anywhere. It's a good expansion pack, but it's kind of missing the game, and considering one of its main selling points is a reprint, I can't rate this very highly. Also worth noting is that it does give us World Legacy Clash, which is an amazing background card, and once again it does give you an alternative art polymerization. Well that's it for this guide, if you liked the video make sure you leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, comment if you have any questions or feedback, or maybe I missed something important. Make sure to check out my Discord, Patreon and Twitch down below, and if you happen to have a dollar lying around and wish to support me, feel free to click that join button down below to support me directly as well as gain access to a few little neat perks. Hey big brother, can I watch Spongebob? Shut up Mokuba, I'm busy flagging YouTube videos to compensate for the fact that I have an extremely small penis. Oh.